Hello, brethren, beloved brethren and sisters, the body of Christ, Church of the Living God. Good morning. Um, gonna go. I'm gonna make two videos today. Um, reading two articles that I got from two separate brethren, um, and I'm going to do the videos in the order in which I received these articles. And. Um, they're pretty, pretty shocking, and I'm going to put the links for the articles, of course, in the description box so you can read them yourself. Um, this one that I, I'm going to be sharing with you came from my beloved brother, Matthew Kroon. <laughs> um, <laughs> brother Matthew, you know that video you sent me with the... <laughs> that was, oh, that was great. Like I said... My wife, just like that, pronounced it right, uh, straight way. So. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to be sharing this one article that Brother Matthew Green <laughs> sent me. And um, <clears throat> it's pretty, pretty chilling. It's pretty chilling when you, uh, when you look into it. Um, the article is off of a site called LifeSiteNews.com. And like I said, I'm going to uh, put this article in the description box so you can see it yourself. And what's funny is I found out that Brother Brian did a video where he was holding up some bottle of like syrup or something for like ice cream. And he read about how it had um, uh, traces of anchovies in it. And he talked about how preservatives in here, at least in my country, in America, the food has been poisoned. With so many toxic things and that there is a uh, fluoride in a lot of our water supply um, and you can look all this up on yourself but this idea that <clears throat> speaking for America now how it is in your nation I don't know um, but I can tell you this um, our beloved brethren uh, in Australia which is the next video I'm going to uh, do uh, on an article that a brother sent me. Um, if it's bad here, I know for a fact that it's really bad in the nation of Australia. So, uh, brethren, uh, sisters, make sure you keep our brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God in Australia in your prayers. It's getting pretty crazy over there, <laughs> and you're going to see. But there are some of my countrymen here in America who are under this absurd belief that our nation would never put anything in our food or in our drink to uh, poison us or to make us more compliant to the nonsensical Jesuitical maxims that are going to be coming especially more extreme within this um, second wave once it officially rolls about. Um, yes, there are those, my countrymen, brethren, sisters, who think that our, our nation would never do that. Our nation wouldn't put stuff that knowingly poisons us or knowingly um, makes people deformed or messes with their biologics within their body. They would never do that. Yeah, yeah, and those of you, my countrymen here in America, are also probably those who still believe that... Uh, Oswald killed Kennedy <laughs> and that our American government had absolutely nothing to do with 9-11 <laughs> and also that man has been on the moon. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I did an older video called America What Happened, which I might also put in the description box of this video, but I want to read this article. And we're going to look up some verse, uh, some scriptures here uh, in the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. But <clears throat> here is this article, and this is just shocking, and it's and it goes along with around the same lines of what Brother Brian did in his little video where he was holding up that bottle of syrup or whatever it was. But get a load of this, and I'm going to read this as verbatim as I can make it without trying to, you know, without tripping over my tongue. <laughs> All right, here we go. And I got to use, of course, my fancy schmancy cell phone because I can't figure out how to do the 
split. Right. Never mind. U.S. professor psychoactive pill should be covertly administered to ensure lockdown compliance. Oh, our nation here in America would never do that. <laughs> Keep smoking that beer and drinking that weed there, buddy. Okay. Chemical moral enhancement substances could help people reason about what the right thing to do is, argued Professor Parker Crutchfield. Michigan. August 13th, 2020, LifeSite News, in an article so shocking, it at first reads like satire. An ethics professor at Western Michigan University advocated for the promotion of psychoactive morality pills in order to alter the behavior of those skeptical of lockdown regulations, suggesting that such drugs could be made compulsory or administered secretly via the water supply. If I'm not mistaken, they did something like that in Nazi Germany. Oh, and our government would never do that, right? You're crazy. You're crazy. You are absolutely crazy. You're nuts. Let's continue. The article was published earlier this week in The Conversation, a news site focusing on co content sourced from the academic and research community and supported by universities from around the world. I bet you if you were to check those universities out, you would see the Jesuits all over. <clears throat> the Conversation lists a number of UK universities as its founding partners in the article. Parker Crutchfield argues that when someone chooses not to follow public health guidelines around the coronavirus, they're defecting from the public good. The public good. You could say the common good, which is, which is Catholic doctrine. See, let's continue. And that such Defectors require chemical, quote, moral enhancement. Substances to help them reason about what the right thing to do is. Oh, our government would never do that. Uh, who killed Kennedy, by the way? Oh, our, our, our Jesuit controlled, <coughs> I mean, our Democratic, <coughs> Republican, our freedom here, our free government here in the United States of America had absolutely nothing to do with the trade t uh, centers coming down, right? Yeah. Let's continue. To me, it seems the problem of coronavirus defectors could be solved by moral enhancement. Like receiving a vaccine to beef up your immune system, people could take a substance to boost their cooperative pro-social behavior. Could a psychoactive pill be the solution to the pandemic, to the pandemic? Crutchfield writes, it's a far out proposal that's bound to be controversial, he concedes, but nevertheless is, nevertheless is one Crutchfield believes is worth at least considering given the importance of social cooperation in the struggle to get COVID-19 <laughs> under control. <laughs> Crutchfield says that one challenge in implementing such a system is that the defectors, defectors, people who have a brain in their head. The defectors who need moral enhancement are also the like, less likely, least likely to sign up for it. He keeps using defectors. 
Note that rhetoric that he is using. Note that. I'm going to get into that one in the next video. But as some have argued, a solution would be to make moral enhancement compulsory or administer it secretly, perhaps via the water supply. These actions require weigh, weighing other values, he writes. Well, if it's for the common good, right? And um, my countrymen, it's like, well, that's against the Constitution. We have a constitutional right. We have been under a state of emergency ever since the signing of the um, Trading with the Enemy Act in the 1940s, which was enacted by Roosevelt. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. We have been under a military jurisdiction within our government. Okay. Which means that the Constitution can be circumvented whenever the Jesuits, <clears throat> our president, sees fit. Okay. The Constitution is today more like a guideline rather than a standing rule. I have all the stuff uh, to prove that, and I just haven't gotten to making that video yet. But uh, our freedoms are uh, an illusion, countrymen, my brethren, here in America. Need to wake up to that. The chemicals mentioned by Crutchfield are oxycotton, oxytocin, and philsocybin. The active component of magic mushrooms. Magic mushrooms. In my lost days, I have taken magic mushrooms before. They're a hallucinogenic. They make you see things. When I was lost, mind you, I took those, okay? And also, too, right on this, um, remember... LSD was created by our government. And they put it in people and their co-workers when they first created it. Uh, they put it unbeknownst to the co-workers in their drinks. So they would trip. My countrymen, you don't think our, our Jesuit country, our Jesuit nation, run by the Jesuits, you don't think they would do that? You need to get saved. And if you are of the Church of the Living God, still thinking that our government wouldn't do that, you need to get into the Scriptures. Okay? So let's continue. Okay, let's re read that. The chemicals mentioned by Crutchfield are oxytocin and pil Pil psilocybin, psilocybin, the active component of magic mushrooms, which he says may cause a person to be more empathetic and altruistic, more giving and generous. Crutchfield says that his research in bioethics, bioethics, focuses on questions like how to induce those who are non-cooperative to get on board with, with doing what's best for the public or common good. Catholic. Catholic. I, w I would bet you if you were to research this crutch field, you would find a Jesuit link somewhere. Twitter users appalled by Crutchfield's article did their own research on his academic history and posted a 2019 paper of his entitled Compulsory Moral Bioenhancement Should Be, Should Be Covert. In at least one instance, Twitter subsequently placed a link behind a warning sign saying the following media includes potential sensitive content. The abstract for that paper reads, Some theorists argue that moral bioenhancement ought to be compulsory. I take this argument one step further, arguing that if moral bioenhancement ought to be compulsory, 
then its administration ought to be covert rather than overt, covert, hidden. This is to say that it is morally preferable for compulsory moral bioenhancement to be administered without the recipients knowing that they are receiving the enhancement. <clears throat> this is to say that it is morally preferable for compulsory moral bioenhancement to be administered without the recipients knowing that they are receiving the enhancements. How would you like to be poisoned and not know it? Eat some of the food that we get here from the grocery stores here in America and in your nation with all the uh, preservatives in them? What, you don't think they would drug our food or our water to make us, to make us more compliant to go along with these evils? You see how important it is that you get saved and get sealed with the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Hmm? Because see, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ living within you can and will make you aware of these things if you're willing to heed his word. Let's continue. My argument for this is that if moral bioenhancement ought to be compulsory, then its administration is a matter of public health, and for this reason should be governed by public health ethics. Yeah, <laughs> like the guy from the Catholic disease creators who is a Jesuit himself? Yeah, yeah. Put public health in the hands of the Jesuits who have nothing but the common good. <laughs> At, at their heart's desire. I get to thinking about Catholicism and the Jesuits, you know, I just get all this congestion in me. I argue that the covert administration of a compulsory moral bioenhancement program better conforms to public health ethics than does an overt compulsory program. In particular, a covert compulsory program promotes values such as liberty, utility, equality, and autonomy better than an overt program does. Um, at least with overt, you have, at, at least, you have a gun pointed at you, take it or die. At least in that, you could say, kill me. At least, at least, at overt, mandatory. Like I said, you take this or die, or... You take that vaccine or we're going to lock you up. Sorry, bro. Sorry there, man. You're going to have to kill me. But covert, <laughs> this guy said, promotes such uh, values such as liberty. <laughs> Utility, equality, and autonomy better than an overt program does. Thus, a covert compulsory moral bioenhancement program is morally preferable to an overt moral bioenhancement program. I, like I said, I'm going to link the article for this in the description box so you can read it yourself. This is, this is pretty scary. A number of Crutchfield's articles can be found on the U.S. government's PubMed.gov site, and when you go to the um, to this article, it's in blue here, so you can look at these articles yourself. One is titled "It is Better to Be Ignorant of Our Moral Enhancement: A Reply to Zambrano." Ignorant. The abstract for that paper reads. 
In a recent issue of Bioethics, I argued that compulsory moral bioenhancement should be administered covertly. Alexander Zambrano has criticized this argument on two fronts. First, contrary to my claim, Zambrano claims that the prevention of ultimate harm by covert moral bioenhancement fails to meet conditions for permissible liberty, restricting public health interventions. Duh. Second, contrary to my claim, Zambrano claims that covert moral bioenhancement undermines autonomy to a greater degree than does overt moral bioenhancements. Exactly. Exactly. Like I said, if they make it mandatory, take it or die, you have the freedom to either take it or say, kill me, shoot me. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. And you ain't going to put me in prison. So, kill me. Exactly. Exactly. When if you do it secretly, what you don't know sure can hurt you. <clears throat> in this paper, I, rebu I rebut both of these arguments, then finish by nothing important by noting important avenues of research that Zambrano arguments that Zambrano's arguments motivate. LifeSite News has written to Crutchfield to ask him whether he believes that the covert administration of psychoactive morally enhancing chemicals in, is in keeping with the U.S. Constitution. We have not received a response as of press time. Again, again, because of the trading with the enemy, trading with the enemy act, okay, under uh, uh, Roosevelt or it might have been Johnson, but because of that, it was Roosevelt who signed, who put these emergency war powers into effect for here in our government, okay, which means that our constitution today can be circumvented, kind of stepped over for the Catholic common good, okay? You can look that up yourself, okay? I might have links for it, which I will link if I have them on my uh, laptop here. Uh, like I said, I got it all printed out, just ready to do it. I just haven't gotten to it yet. But like I said, our Constitution is a guideline at best rather than a standing legal principle. My countrymen here in America, you got to wake up to that. You got to wake up to that. And remember how I said at the outset of this video about our about Australia? Australia? I wouldn't mind going to Australia once before I die and uh, you know, go to be with the Lord, but um, my heart goes with you in Australia. You know, the Church of the Living God, my brothers and sisters in Australia, really does. But in Melbourne, Australia, the political authorities have adopted simpler methods for ensuring the public complies with government lockdown regulations. With the police given the power to enter private homes without a warrant or permission to carry out spot checks, the Victoria Police Chief Commissioner unapologetically explained that officers have in some instances been smashing car windows due to people inside the cars not cooperating with them or following the newly imposed health guidelines just like uh, they did in the Inquisitions. And that is it for that article. That is it for that this article. Like I said, I'm going to put this article in the description box. I may put several other videos in there, but this one you're definitely going to get in there so you can read it yourself. Okay? Now... I want to focus on something out of that. Now, 
We're going to be looking at a few verses here in the scriptures, but I'm going to be using my Strong's Concordance. Um, the Greek and Hebrew here in the Strong's Concordance is not to be trusted. And the, um, the Greek, as far as the Texas Receptus is concerned, uh, what edition of the 18, not 19, of the 18 renditions of the Texas Receptus, I don't know which one. That's why we don't mess with the Greek or Hebrew when we have the perfect and errant uh, given by inspiration word of God, the King James Scriptures. We don't have to mess with that stuff because we got what God said preserved for us here in the King James Scriptures. But for this, I want us to look at this, okay? Now, we're going to be looking at Pharmacaea, okay? Pharmacaea, which is the word we derive our pharmacy and pharmacists from, okay? Now, the word pharmakeia, as far as I know, in the Greek, okay, appears three times in the New Testament, in Galatians and twice in Revelation, okay? And pharmakeos and uh, pharmakeos and pharmakeos also appear um, once, uh, pharmakeos appears once in Revelation and Pharmakaios appears once in Revelation, as far as I know. Like I said, I don't mess with this stuff. And we cannot take this seriously. But for this, it's very important kind of for us to get a, a grasp. Okay? Now, according to this, Pharmakaia, medication, pharmacy, i.e., by extents, magic, Literary, literary, literally or figuratively, sorcery or witchcraft. And from a chaos, spell giving potion, a drug, a drug, i.e., spell giving potion, a druggist, pharmacist, or poisoner i.e. by extents, a, mag a magician, sorcerer, and pharmakaios, the same as 5332, sorcerer, okay, sorcery, witchcraft. Now, now, turn in your King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures, to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, we will be reading verses 16. On to verse 21. Go there in the King James Scriptures, the true and real Scriptures. Go there. This I say, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, capital S, as ye shall not fulfill the... And... Uh, beg your pardon. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. But if now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, and right there, witchcraft, which is pharmakeia, 
hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I told you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Works of the flesh, sorcery, witchcraft. Do, do you see? Do you see? But now, let's finish the chapter from verses 22 on to verse 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, <clears throat> meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, capital S, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Witchcrafts, pharmakeia. Poison, magic potions. That's why I don't. Uh, that's why I don't go to doctors. Okay. Now again, there is a time and a place for everything, and for an, every purpose under the heaven. You go find that where that says. I'll give you a hint. It's in Ecclesiastes. Okay. Um, sometimes, yes, we do have to go to the sorcerers. Yes, yes, especially for uh, like broken bones and stuff like that. My wife had to go to the sorcerers because she had some kind of gut problem. Okay, my wife says I ought to go to the sorcerers because I got a, a major tooth issue that put me down yesterday, and my gum in the back here is like receded all the way down. But see, prevention and what God hath made is key to anything. For example, I get out uh, every day, I get out a garlic press, press it into a spoon and some ginger, raw garlic and raw ginger and press that into a spoon and put raw uncooked honey indigenous to my area and I put that in my mouth and eat that. God's natural antibiotic. Okay? But prevention is the key so that we don't have to as a last resort, go to the sorcerers, the Jesuit sorcerers, okay? But now, go to Revelation. It's interesting that the um, mentioning of sorcerers and sorcery and stuff like that that is uh, um, linked to pharmakeia is in the book of Revelation, isn't it? Isn't it? Because the mark of the beast you know, which is going to be in the right hand or in the forehead. Isn't that interesting? Revelation chapter 9. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 9. Oh, where should we begin? Let's begin at verse 18 and finish at verse 21, the end of the chapter. Please read the context on your own time, okay? <clears throat> All right, verse 18 on to verse 21 in Revelation 9. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, 
that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders nor their sorceries, which right there is the word pharmakeia, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts, their sorceries, their sorceries, their drugs, their pharmaceutical drugs. Brethren, we realize that all this ha <laughs> ha and these stupid, stupid regulations and maxims that are being pushed on us. We, the Church of the Living God, realize that it's preparatory. We get that. We get that. Okay? But verse 21, neither repented they of their murders, abortions, nor their sorceries, their pharmaceutical drugs, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. The mark of the beast. I am persuaded. We're not going to be here. We're going to be called up before this happens. But I am persuaded that the mark of the beast is going to be some kind of pharmaceutical thing. That it's going to be through the pharmacies. The sorcerers. <laughs> Okay, that they're going to put the mark of the beast into play after the body of Christ has been caught up. Absolutely. Absolutely. And with what's going on right now today, can you not see that? Can you not see that? And like I have said on many occasions to several brethren, personally, personally, we know that the second wave is coming, right? And it hasn't really, at least here in America, it has not been totally announced that, yes, we are in the second wave. And I personally believe within the second wave, they are going to get far more brazen, far more bolder, far more flippant with what they do. And we're going to start to see more military involvement, especially here in America. Okay, But I believe that there will be a trigger event that's going to trigger these maxims coming in. Now, whether that what that will be, I do not know. That is just my personal belief. I am open to discussion amongst brethren and sisters on that. Okay, I am open to, this, to, to talk about that. But I do personally believe that there will be a trigger event that's going to make everybody so <gasps> that's going to that ha going to have most people want want to stay at home, want to get that poisonous vaccine, want to <laughs> and do all this nutty nutty stuff. <clears throat> now, could it be something that's maybe already being implemented by? Uh, what is it, psycho-enhancement drugs to make people docile and willing to comply with something that, that we know is evil, unbeknownst? Is that already happening? Look around you, Church of the Living God, and you lost people who may see this. Look around you, and hey, you're lost, you happen to see this, I'm going to link um, some uh, a couple of salvation videos, two which I did, and one by um, my beloved, sweet brother, um, Aaron Deering, um, which is just one of the best salvation videos I've seen. Uh, I'm going to link those in the description box as well. If you're lost, you need to get saved. Now! We're playing around. But now, go to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21.
<clears throat> we are going to be reading in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 on to verse 9. And this is the word pharmakeus that we're going to be looking at, and I'll point it out to you. The pharmacy, the, the drug makers. <laughs> and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of, the, out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Who is that? The Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. <clears throat> and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now, Trinitarian, and look at verse 5. And they that sat upon the thrones said, <clears throat> And he that sat upon the throne. Don't worry, I'm not going to get started. I'm not going to go off on that. I've made myself abundantly clear on that. Okay. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, which uh, apparently is the Greek word from Achaeus, which is linked to drugs, witchcraft, sorcery. Okay. And idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will shew thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And now finally, uh, Revelation 22. Verses 12 unto verse 21 in Revelation chapter 22. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first. And the last, one God, one God, Spirit, soul, and body, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers from a chaos, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. 
I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. You know, in uh, reading, what's that? Oh. You know, in reading that article, that's just laced with Jesuitism, with deception, with infiltration. They probably could have already been doing that, or are already probably doing that. I would not be surprised. Brethren, I know we get tired of the fight, but we ain't going to be here much longer. Personally, I do believe that next spring, I, I ain't, I'm not pulling a, what's his name, uh, what's his name, um, bearded uh, breaker, I ain't pulling a breaker, it's not, can't do that, won't do that. But um, I'm hoping that next spring, the chronological spring, according onto the Hebrew Jewish cal calendar, not to the Gregorian one that we, or the Roman one that we are under now. But I do believe that, and hope and pray, that next spring um, will be the catching way of the body of Christ before the time of it could happen right now. It could happen in a few seconds from now. But I, I'm hoping and praying. But until that time, brethren, we have to stay vigilant and fervent for the Lord. And keep fighting until the very last breath. Even though it seems that we're fighting an uphill battle. But at the end of the day. At the end of the day. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Father, He wins. If you're lost, my goodness, man, woman, what's wrong with you? Did, is there, there's something wrong with you in there. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, too, some some sorcerers drugs yes are needful if we allow ourselves to get to that point where our bodies are so intoxicated with the poison already put there by the sorcerers but brethren we gotta fight and keep on fighting Like I said, um, I'm going to put the link. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to put quite a few links in this video, especially. Um, read this article for yourself. Look at the resources. And if you're lost, get saved. Because the Lord is there, ready to forgive. But he ain't forcing you like what Calvin taught. Okay? Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. Uh, thank you, Brother Matthew Green, for uh, sharing that article. Um, I love you guys. I'm going to um, take a break, and then I'm going to get into the next video, which is just as disturbing. 
I love you. And, um, thank you. Thank you. See you in the next video.